My name is Pierre. I'm the co-founder and co-CEO of uh, Cal.com. It's an open source scheduling product. We just reached 15,000 stars on GitHub, uh, I think two days ago or something. And I think we're close to 2 million bookings um, uh, done over Cal, which is uh, pretty mind-blowing that 2 million people met because we just built something in our living rooms. <laughs> It was just an idea like one and a half years ago is, is, is mind blowing. I was basically Googling for Calendly open source. Like, like that was literally my keyword and uh, I couldn't find any compelling product ever. Like it was none. There was a few uh, Reddit posts and, um, and I think um, on, on Hacker News, people asking for like, hey, does anyone know like an open source Calendly? I need this for XYZ. I was like, huh, interesting. I need this too. Why don't I like just start it very upfront that this is a commercial open source software. There's a difference between false and cost free, free open source software and commercial open source software. I personally believe that a lot of issues in the open source community come from lack of funding. And to get funding, you typically need to have a commercial product that makes revenue. That's where we... Yeah, we, we built like an enterprise license where you need to pay us for, for, for the usage. So we did raise a series A, I think in December, or maybe January. Um, so like within the same year, um, which was 25 million uh, series A. So like total funding is now 32.4, I think. It's all public on calocom slash open, which is kind of like our open open startup page, you need to be realistic with your burn rate. Like our burn rate is crazy cheap. Like we're still burning uh, like a pre-seed seed company just because uh, we, we we grow headcount by product, not the mm -hmm. other way around. Like you can't hire more people and expect them to grow the business. It, it, in fact, I, I'd even say the business moves slower the more people you hire. I don't recommend having a, a burn plan. Like I know some people be like, Oh, we have a budget of two million, but we only spent one. So let's hire two more people, three more people. It was like you should hire people because your business needs it, not because you have the budget or the funding. We still do contract to hire, <laughs> so that hasn't changed. You start at a company as a contractor first for about a month, uh, four to six weeks, and you define a very well scoped project um, where you can say, was this good? Was this bad? Um, and then you eventually, both the company, but also the contractor can decide if they want to continue working together. And I think one thing we can say about hiring is we, we pay global salaries. For me, it's like, okay, the most fair is, is money for code. If you treat, you know, work as something like where you present value to a company and you want to be fairly compensated, I don't think the manager should care what your living situation is. I'd say like a European salary in, 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 in Sri Lanka, you can pay for the whole family and, and basically buy laptops for your brother and teach them how to code. And, you know, like that, that's just awesome in my opinion. And, and these engineers are literally the same quality and output. Like, it's not like there's any difference. Like you, if you wouldn't know, you wouldn't know. And, and so that's just, yeah, that's something I'm, I'm, I'm still very proud of having uh, global salaries. Also what we've seen is, We've seen people literally in our team move to live in Switzerland from India for a couple of weeks or months. And this would not happen. Like this would just not happen, right? Like, and, yeah, yeah, it's life changing. And I, I'm a digital nomad. So like, should I change my salary every time I move? Like if I go from Germany to whatever. Some things and yeah. very helpful yeah. and refreshing to say these yeah. and we don't hear it often. Uh, and, and all these things are public, right? Like what people get paid and where they yeah. come from. It's all in your public metrics. So we've been hearing about all these positive aspects of being open source and an open startup. Yeah. And so biggest challenge, yeah. So the biggest challenge is, and I, I think for anyone who wants to go open source is you really need to know what you're getting into. One side that no one's talking about is open source is really, really hard when it comes to complexity, product, community, um, different stakeholders. You know, you have the free freemium users, you have the enterprise customers. Basically our spectrum of users is, the hobby engineer and uh, fortune 500 companies and they have very, very different needs and very different expectations right um so that's really hard in terms of product making decisions what types of features to prioritize and and, and deprioritize and and 
having literally everyone be able to write an issue and create a comp like can be overwhelming. I think there's like 600 open issues that we have right now. What would be your advice to people getting started? Uh, maybe a mistake or a pitfall to avoid. And it didn't sound like there has been, <clears throat> but yeah, what would be your advice? I, uh, I don't think, I don't think there is something like overnight successes. I mean, you hear this all the time. Uh, it's, it's, it's a very, very long grind, not even with a product that has interest, like in general, as a founder, like this is my 11th year now as a founder, as a, like an entrepreneur and, and, and product person. And I've probably launched like 30 products in the last 10 years, minimum has to be probably more. And the first startup failed. Second one was acquired. Third one is now Cal or fourth, actually. I think to increase your chances, you know, to be lucky, you need to just keep on do, doing things. Like, I think a lot of people underestimate the power of pivots. Like I've seen companies, I've actually invested in a couple of companies that did like a hard pivot. And within two weeks, they had more users than they've had in the previous product for like a year or two years, right? Like sometimes you just struck a, yeah, find the lightning in the bottle and then, yeah, you just, focus on that instead like, <laughs> well any 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 last thoughts that you would like to uh leave people um my dms are open if you have any questions uh on twitter uh it's peer underscore uh, rich r-i-c-h i'm happy to also reply to emails peer at cal.com or, or hook me <laughs> if you have something more serious um but yeah no i'm uh, it's it's always a pleasure to to jump on these calls and um see see how open source continues to grow.